welcome. We are together this day to celebrate being the community of faith, to celebrate what we call sometimes the family of faith, and to recognize the ways that we are grateful to be together as we gather in the light of Christ. Let us prepare our hearts to worship God.
Good morning, church family. Good morning. I invite you to rise, either in body or in spirit, and join me in the call to worship found in this morning's worship guide. Let us live a life worthy of the calling to which we have been called. Let us live our calling. Is one body and one spirit. Just as we all one Lord, one Lord, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Let's worship God together. Let's sing our opening hymn number 492, Baptized in Water. love is sure and steadfast. Let us receive the good news that we are forgiven and return to right relationship with God. Let us sing verse 1 from I Come With Joy, found in this morning's worship guide. <laughs>
be always with you. And always with you. Thank you. Please share the peace from a distance. Jesus. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. So we as the family of faith invite those who would receive baptism and present those for baptism to come forward. Hear also these words from Holy Scripture. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is above all and through all and in all. The promise is to you and to your children and to all that are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls. Obeying the word of our Lord Jesus, we are confident of his promises. We baptize those whom Christ has called. In baptism, God claims us and puts a sign on us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and his resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Let us remember and rejoice in our own baptism as we celebrate this sacrament. On behalf of the session, I present Max Gregory Visake to receive the sacrament of baptism. And so I invite his parents to answer these questions. Do you desire that this child be baptized? We do. Relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach that faith to your child? We do. Let us pray together. We give you thanks, O holy God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the water, and you created all that is, seen and unseen, by the gift of water, you sustain all life. In the time of Noah, you destroyed evil in the water of the flood. And by your saving ark, you gave a new beginning. You led Israel through the sea, out of slavery, into the freedom of the promised land. And in the water of Jordan, our Lord was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, Christ has set us free from sin and opened the way to eternal life. We thank you, O God, for the gift of baptism. In this water, we are buried with Christ in his death, and from this water, we are raised to share in Christ's resurrection, reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. So by the power of your Spirit, O oh God, bless this water, that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sins of all who are cleansed by it, raise him to new life, and engraft him to the body of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon him, that he may have power to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ, to whom, with the Father and Holy Spirit, <laughs> Ready? 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 No, still for dad's arms? Okay, that's fine. That's fine. What is the Christian name of this child? Max? 
Max Gregory. Max Gregory, I baptize you in the name of the Father. Sorry. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Uphold Max Gregory by your Holy Spirit. Give this little one the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might. Max Gregory, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. <laughs> it's almost done. Almost, almost done. Go ahead. Okay. Do you, the members of this congregation, promise to love, encourage, support, and nurture this young child in the faith that we have received, supporting him that he might learn in all times, and sharing with him the good news of the gospel in all that you do or say, so helping him to know and follow our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? If so, answer, we do. We do. Max Fisike is now a member of the Church Universal, and through baptism, God has made Max a member of the household of God and entrusted his nurture to all of us. Let us sing together. So my apologies to the children who are here this day. I uh, totally forgot that we were supposed to do Bucket Brigade, so we'll do it next month. My apologies for forgetting that. Um, but the time with children, I think I'd like to do from the baptismal font this morning. So if you can see, that's great. And uh, all, all those of all ages are welcome to think here about baptism. One of the reasons that we have the baptismal font in the center of the church is because it helps us to remember how central it is to our lives. When Max was baptized, crying or not, Max was welcomed into the life and the family of faith. And he, like so many others who have been baptized, including Liam, and Rachel 
and others who are here this day having an important part in the life of the worshiping community. So many folks are a part of this church and they are here or they are at a distance sharing in this worship space. And that water that he was able to splash, he had fun at that part, didn't he? <laughs> that water is something we all take for granted every day. How many of us walk over into our kitchens and turn on the faucet, and out comes the water, right? But in the time of Jesus, water was a little different, wasn't it? It was in a river going by. It was in a lake. It was something you carted from a well. It was a reminder that as ordinary as it was and necessary for our every day, it was also really, really special. And Jesus taught us that it's even more special because what happens when we baptize someone is we welcome them in a new way into the life of faith. And we remind them, and all of us who are old enough to remember the baptism that happens, we remind us all how special the relationship is in the family of faith. And so whether we're online or whether we're here in the sanctuary, we are always a part of the life of faith. And so I give thanks for each one of you who is here this day and for the ways that baptism reminds us we are one big, mostly happy family. And we give thanks to God. Let us pray. Dear God, I thank you on behalf of each and every one of us. We thank you for your love to us and for the love that binds us together as the community of faith in this place and across the miles. Help us to know we are together as your beloved community. The second scripture lesson for this day comes to us from the letter to the church at Ephesus, Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at the 25th verse and going into chapter 5. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. We had hoped that we would celebrate siblings baptizing their babies, celebrating two new sets of siblings as well as two cousins. But the flight schedules after Hurricane Debbie had other ideas. 
So we're blessed to celebrate with Max and his family today, and hopefully next month we will celebrate with Santino and his family. They are all members of one another, and so are we. Baptism reminds us how connected we are, that we are members of one another, a large and connected family, a network of relations, who all of us are related to God. Baptism reminds us of that. The way in which the writer of Ephesians invites us to deal with anger, well, that could be a whole nother sermon and probably will someday soon. The injunction, though, to hold our tongues can be worthy of a moment here in how we get along as members of one another. That let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. Tell the truth, we aim to speak to our children this way, in part because we want to teach them by example and then somehow, as people age, we begin to expect more of them, and we lose our tempers, and we get angry, and we let our tongues go. And we say things that we regret saying, especially to those we love. So we will aim once more to build others up and try to have our words bring grace to another. Jesus gave himself up for all of us. I admit, I get a little frustrated with how some Christians spend a lot of energy on their own personal relationship with Jesus. It's not that I'm against our own personal relationships with Jesus, but it always seems to me that Jesus' reference and emphasis was always to the community. Jesus spoke of the kingdom of God, and that sounds like a group to me. Here, the apostle is asking us to imitate Jesus giving, Jesus loving, and to act as God's beloved children to one another. That means we're all siblings in Christ, beloved children of God who are called to live in love. We can think of baptism as a new network connection. Max has become one of us in a new way, and we have all recognized our connection to Max and to one another. We are all part of this connected community of God's members together. Author and pastor Brian McLaren considers the metaphor of a network to describe what used to be called the kingdom of God. For many people today, he writes, kingdom language evokes patriarchy, chauvinism, imperialism, domination, and a regime without freedom. Not a pretty picture. And the very opposite of the liberating, barrier-breaking, dom domination-shattering, reconciling movement that the kingdom of God was intended to be. God is inviting people into a life-giving network. First, God wants people to be connected, plugged in, in communication with God, so God can transfer to them what they will need. Not just information, but also virus debugging software, along with love, hope, empowerment, purpose, and wisdom. Also, each person who is connected to God must become in integrally connected to all others in the network. In this way, the network of God breaks down the walls of smaller, exclusive networks, like networks of racism, nationalism, and the like and invites them into the only truly worldwide web of love. 
The network exchanges information and increases understanding for all participants. The network becomes a resource for people outside the network as well. And of course, people are always invited to enter the connectivity themselves. The metaphor of an ecosystem could work in a similar way. We are currently living in an imbalanced, self-destructive ecosystem, but God is inviting us to live in a new network of relationships that will provide balance, harmony, and health. The image of network for you, depending on your age and experience, might bring to mind telephone lines or computer and internet applications. But for me, it always brings up trees. Ever since I heard an NPR report about the work of Susan Samard, Samard grew up in a Canadian forest family, descendants of loggers, before becoming herself a forestry ecologist. She's now a professor of forest ecology at the University of British Columbia. When most of us think of fungus, we imagine mushrooms sprouting out of the ground. Well, those mushrooms are actually the fruit of the fungus. While the majority of the fungal organism lives in the soil interwoven with tree roots as a vast network of mycelium. Mycelium are incredibly tiny threads of the greater fungal organism that wrap around and bore into tree roots. Taken together, mycelium composes what's called a mycorrhizal network, I hope I said that right, which connects individual plants together to transfer water, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, and other materials. German forester Peter Wollehemann dubbed this network the Wood Wide Web. As it is through the mycelium that trees communicate. In healthy forests, each tree is connected to others via this network, enabling trees to share water and nutrients. For saplings growing in particularly shady areas, there is not enough sunlight reaching their leaves to perform adequate photosynthesis. For survival, the sapling relies on nutrients and sugar from older, taller trees sent through the mycorrhizal network. A study on Douglas firs in England's University of Reading indicates that trees recognize the root tips of their relatives and favor them when sending carbon and nutrients through the fungal network. The way Suzanne Samard describes it, trees are linked to neighboring trees by an underground network of fungi that resembles the neural networks in the human brain. In one study, Samard watched as a Douglas fir that had been injured by insects appeared to send chemical warning signals to a ponderosa pine growing nearby. The pine tree then produced defense enzymes to protect against the insect. This was a breakthrough, Samard says. The trees were sharing information that actually is important to the health of the whole forest. This certainly can help us all relate in the network of trees. In addition to warning each other of danger, trees have been known to share nutrients at critical times to keep each other healthy. Samard has studied how the trees in a forest are often linked to each other via an older tree that she calls a mother or hub tree. In connecting with all the trees of different ages, the mother trees can actually facilitate the growth of these understory seedlings. The seedlings will link into the network of old trees 
and benefit from that huge uptake resource capacity. And the old trees would also pass along a little bit of carbon and nutrients and water to the little seedlings at crucial times in their lives that actually help them survive. And so it is that our connectedness is a part of the whole world. Our connectedness is built in to who we are as humans and evidently who all of creation is as God's created world. So we give thanks this day that we can serve as a way of sharing goodness and light and love and peace, not only with Max and his family, but with all of us. Let us rise in body or in spirit and affirm what it is we believe using portions of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge the baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us sing the hymn that is on our, bapt our insert this morning. Sorry. In the bowl, there is a flower.
Let us, in response to these many gifts given by God, let us offer our gifts, the gifts of our pocketbooks and wallets, and the gifts of our lives to God in this time of offering. you to take a look at the insert this day that is printed on green paper to learn about the announcements and the life of the church. Um, the summer serve program being open to grades 6 to 8 um, has one remaining service opportunity this Tuesday. They will be serving at the Manor House Spaghetti Dinner. Um, there's information there on how to contact Mrs. Duffy. If you're a young person, then you would like to come and volunteer on Tuesday. And then um, if you'd like to support the volunteers by coming on Tuesday, that information about the Manor House Dinner is there as well. Um, on Thursday, we will have our final Vacation Bible School Come to the Table event. Um, and it will conclude with uh, uh, a, a supper that is a barbecue, and so we hope you will come and, I don't know, should we call it a barbecue? I guess it's more of a cookout, and nowadays we call it that, because barbecue has a very set definition, doesn't it? But we will be um, sharing with, uh, and the deacons are hosting us, and hopefully um, if there is any needed volunteering for that, we will reach out um, to let you know that. But please join us for an all-age vacation Bible school that's been fun over the last...
last number of Thursdays, and which will conclude with our fifth this Thursday. Also this Thursday is August 15th, so the Beacon uh, newsletter September's deadline is Thursday for folks who want to uh, write for that and let us know events that are happening. September is just a few weeks away, believe it or not. Um, in our prayer list today, I, I draw attention to the fact that um, William Gray, um, whom some of you may know, and uh, Patty Redline's father uh, has been hospitalized. Um, also, B. Smith was recently hospitalized. I hope to head to the hospital and see who's still there today. Um, I did hear from Casey Flager that Jack Insigna um, hopes to come to rehab in the coming weeks, um, and she had a video that she shared of him pulling himself up as he has lost the bottoms of both of his legs in that horrible um, car wreck. Um, but he is uh, persevering, and we continue to pray for him in the coming weeks. Also, Monica asks, uh, asks me to thank you for your prayers uh, for Bill. He had the valve replacement surgery, and he's home and doing well. So good for him, and we will continue to pray for his continued healing. Let us come before God together. Let us pray. All-powerful God, you are near to us, and you hear us when we pray. So enliven us with your spirit. Bring to us the fire of your love, that we might share it with others. Help us to remember and recognize our baptism, that we might share in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, and share with all your everlasting love. Oh God, I echo the words of Sir Francis Drake when I ask you to disturb us, O oh Lord, when we are too well pleased with ourselves, when our dreams have come true because we dream too little, because we sail too close to the shore. Disturb us, O oh Lord, when with the abundance of things we possess, we have lost our thirst for the water of life. When having fallen in love with time, we have ceased to dream of eternity. And in our efforts to build a new earth, we have allowed our vision of heaven to grow dim. So stir us, O oh Lord, to dare more boldly to venture into wider seas, where storms show your mastery, where losing sight of land we shall find the stars. Help us, O one who pushes back the horizons of our hopes, and invite us to be brave and follow. Help us, O God. Surround us with your love. Nourish us with a network of this community, inspire us again to be your peacemakers in the world. And help us to pray together as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Let us rise in body, or in spirit, and sing together hymn number 487, When Morning Gilds the Sky.
knowing that the God who blesses you is Jesus who walked beside you, and that the Holy Spirit walks before you and around you, surrounding you with love and grace this day and forevermore.